Happy New Year to all my YouTubers on this channel. Welcome to Sterling on Cinemas, that's Cinemas with the Ness. And today is going to be the final entry as of right now in the Tyler Perry playlist, my review on A Fall From Grace on Netflix. So before I begin, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. As a matter of fact, I have kept getting subscribers. I have seen, I have noticed that people are continuing to subscribe, so continue to do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. I even appreciate the support that I'm getting from from just, just random people. Like, it's not even to the people that I reach out to. I reach out to a lot of people about the channel, but it's like every every other week I get a new subscriber, but I appreciate the support in the long run. But if you have anything good or bad to say about this film, leave a comment on the section below. And most importantly, watch it before you have anything bad to say about this movie. Go and watch it on Netflix because it's amazing. Grace Waters, played by Crystal Fox, is a longtime pillar of her Virginia community. Stays composed with her when her ex weds, ex weds his mistress and her son moves away. With persuasion from her best friend Sarah, played by the great Felicia Rashad, Felicia Rashad, what? Felicia Rashad, Claire Huxtable, she tries putting herself first, and a handsome stranger, Macabre Brooks, becomes her surprise second love. Yet, any woman can snap at any given time, and Grace's new husband upon, soon ravages her life her work, and many say her sanity. Shuttered in a cell awaiting trial for his murder, Grace's only hope for indication for vindication lies with Jasmine Bryant, played by Brescia Webb, previously saw in, seen in Acrimony as a public defender who has never tried a case. Okay, so, A Fall From Grace. It is a movie that I've seen twice, and I loved it the first time I watched it, and I loved it just the same. Well, not twice. I've seen it three times at this point. Like, as of recording this video, I've seen it three times. So, after watching it the third time, that is when I chose to give my review on it. But when I saw it first, you know, that was, like, when I was way early in my career. The good old days. But, A Fall From Grace could relatively be called one of Tyler Perry's most recent best. And for anybody who is all too familiar with certain thriller tropes, may not be pleased with the movie because that is a few people's complaints about A Fall From Grace, how if they know a thriller inside and out and how it's crafted, that it, it captures, it doesn't do anything new or it's kind of the when it tries to be unpredictable or when it tries to put twists in there, it doesn't work for those people, but it works for me. I personally do not become fixated with what serves as a trope but what layers it may have added in order to set it apart from most others. See, Tyler Perry's specialty doesn't even apply to making thrillers, as is evidenced with his career as a writer and director, but some of the, some of the two other movies that sport a similar mood and suspense that I absolutely love in his filmography are Temptation and Acrimony. To reiterate, I did say that there are certain things in Acrimony that this movie a Fall From Grace does much better, even the build-up. I don't know how easy it is for die-hard fans of the thriller genre to predict where the conspiracy leads to or what it is built upon. But A Fall From Grace leans on various factors that elevates the build-up as it goes. The film hits us with a tragedy right from the start, and then we are left questioning this one event. This one event that we are left up in the air with, but before this one question can get answered, we are drawn into preceding circumstances that would eventually tie everything together. The layers and elements that are incorporated into the conspiracy and everything outside that makes solving the conspiracy theoretical is all the worth watching. When you take a rookie lawyer, the I'm, I'm right now I'm like naming all the different layers that really add tension and add suspense. When you take a rookie lawyer, a defendant who is everything but guilty, whose murder, whose murder compelled by anger convinces otherwise, her husband, her story, sorry, her story with the mysterious man, her friend and the defendant's husband, who is a police officer that witnesses a woman falling in the beginning, it is nothing but a clean, solid, and steadily paced and suspenseful narrative that gives enough questions to be answered, even if it's not immediately or ASAP. 
but it is also a film that brings to light something that has always been in Tyler Perry's film since the beginning. And that is just an underlying cautionary message. Cautionary message. I couldn't say that right. An underlying cautionary tale, the moral to the story. While not all of them have some type of underlying cautionary moral to the story, there are some, there are those movies of his that put a certain character in a certain situation based off of the circumstances that he or she may have find themselves in. For example, Judith in Temptation shows Temptation shows what happens when you let seduction get the best of you and the family that prays with Sanaa Lathan and Alfred Woodard shows the result of greed and infidelity, specifically from Sanaa Lathan's character, Andrea, keeping all this money from Chris, $300,000, and she don't even want to give mama no money, that type of thing. But A Fall from Grace is kind of questionable on whether it has a cautionary element to it or not and this at this point of the review i was kind of unsure if this really had a moral to the story intentionally or not because i had a one thing when i was watching it on it was labeled under fantasy i'm like i don't know why why it's labeled under a fantasy because something like this could happen in real life someone can take your identity somebody can ravage your finances somebody can just just snatch the rug right under your feet and you'll fall like like you would have never guessed. And to say whether it has a cautionary element to it or not is questionable. And this is due to the plot being driven by suspense. Even so, if so, the, then the moral of the story would be that taking risks can result in good and they can result in bad. For Grace, she took the risk of letting someone back into her life after going through a baseline divorce only to get put through a hellish ringer when she finally gets, when she gets financially bamboozled, I mean, right when everything was getting perfect, this man, Macabre Brooks, comes out and over talk about, you owe me. After I gave you all the sex, all the dates, all the treats, all the visits, you need to give me something. Lesson learned. Don't, fellas, don't you ever be in that mindset when it comes to being with a woman. Don't ever be in the she owes me mindset. You are giving to her. You are supposed to be giving to her. No matter what, because giving is a part of the relationship. Give and take. It's 50-50. It's a, it's a first, it's, it's a what comes around, what goes around thing. But for Jasmine, it is stepping out. Her risk was stepping out to try to understand what, it, why exactly she was put into this position of being financially low, of having a fall from grace. She could have easily let Grace plead guilty, which is what she wanted to do, but that would have been been an easy way out. The level of dedication spurs inside of the, inside of her with the constant info she gains from Grace that itself pleads to be done justice. I mean, when you everything you heard of, if you just nitpick, she murdered a husband. That's easy to plead her guilty and send her to jail. But when you listen to everything that came before and everything that resulted in the position she's in now. Like, did you miss the part where she became financially, where she was um stripped of her finances out of nowhere, out of the blue, all because this man right here thinks that she owes him everything because he has given her a few things, even a proposal, even dates, even fireflies, even outings and treats, all this other, all this other stuff, right? When you lit, when you listen to that part and you just forget about everything that came before that she murdered the husband because that's all they say in the courtroom that she is a cold-blooded killer she is not a cold-blooded killer she was just an angry black woman that was taken advantage of that wanted to get even and expressed herself gracefully but at the end of the day i mean you really want the the movie begs for you to root for root for grace because it puts you it literally puts you in her shoes whether you're a man or a woman, because I'm sure this could happen to you if you're if you're a dude, but if you're a woman, you know, you um you may have been in situations like this. You may have not been financially bamboozled, but you've been you've been finessed. You've been taken advantage of once or twice by 
by that one guy who was just an a has an a hole mentality of you owe me or I've done this for you so why don't you just do this for me you know Rotten Tomatoes gives a fall from grace a 16 percent a fall from grace is one of Tyler Perry's best movies in recent years with coming with coming from a different outlook and outlet hence Netflix but the film's mix of an off-kilter mystery and a cautionary tale makes for three times the intrigue that can most definitely rival Temptation. So as of right now, this has the highest rating on every Tyler Perry film. And no, I'm not saying that I love that this movie more than Tyler, all the other Tyler Perry movies that came before it. Or some of the ones that I put in the 90s, I love this one more. I'm not saying that, but this one deserves a 9.6 out of 10 just because of that level of intrigue and a level of suspense and the level and just how many elements were put into this into the thriller to make it what it was. So my top 10 movies in this filmography would be, well, top 10. I don't want to go through all that. But what's in the top five are the Why Did I Get Married films, Acrimony, Temptation, and this. Because those were just like the Why Did I Get Married movies. Were, were hilarious but they were downright teachable even in today's even in today's world like those movies were 2007 2010 or 2011 but they still apply to today they still hold up and then temptation still holds up acrimony still holds up and this th this came out in 2020 during the pandemic so how could this not hold up how could this not be relevant today but that is my review on a fall from grace. I hope you have enjoyed the Tyler Perry plays. I appreciate all of the views I've been getting on some of the earlier movies because I know those are the more allotted ones because those are the ones that are heavily based on the plays like uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, Medea's Family Reunion, Meet the Browns, Why Did I Get Married 1 and 2. Thank you for all the support, love and support you have given me on those videos and I will be posting my a way back Wednesday review on the Karate Kid 2010 later today. Now I know it's not a Wednesday, but what better way to start off the new year than with the next part, than with a brand new playlist? Because I'm glad that my Wednesday and Tuesday playlists are right on track with each other. Like they are both reaching the end or they are both catching up at some point or some caliber. But I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you guys later with my Karate Kid review.